Hello, this is Cecil Sunk here, and I've got a replay between my friend uh, XN Memcopy. I don't think he's a part of the XN anymore, so he just goes by Memcopy, and myself. It is PVZ. And the goal of what I'd like to show you is about a style of play that revolves around using Immortals, Blink Stalkers, and Archons. When you're going for this sort of style, the idea is to use an army composition that's extremely versatile and can destroy basically any army of the Zerg except that of Broodlords. So if you want to go ahead and use this style, I suggest using any opening you like and in this video I'm doing a one gate fast expand and I like to get a really, cra uh, really fast stalker out and with this first stalker I have the option of running around the map and being pretty active with it. And you can see here in this replay that I had realized my opponent took their gas a little bit later than usual. And you can see they haven't even started link speed, it's 4.30 or so. My soccer already finished, and I'm going to go ahead and run across the map because I know link speed is not at all a threat. And I can be really annoying with this first soccer, especially with the soccer since it can't get trapped by links. Back at my base, get a nexus once you have 400 minerals. and constantly be producing sentries out of this gateway and after you get your nexus cut probes temporarily and you'll be getting down uh, two gateways one right after another and that is a one gate fast expand just be sure to be producing sentries out of this and if you're aggressive with your first cell and your first stalker be sure to come on back before link speed will finish and you can see I'm getting back to my base just as about link speed finish which is exactly what you want and that is a good early game by myself against the Zerg opponent. Now that I finished up my um, the second Nexus, what I'm doing now is croning out probes really hard so that I can stay up and work account with my Zerg opponent. And since my army's not doing anything else right now, I'm killing the rocks. Always a great thing to do. And here's where the game starts getting pretty interesting. Note that I'm taking a robotics facility two gases right now, and pretty soon here I'll be getting a spotlight council as well. First thing you want out of the robotics facility is an observer, and of course immediately put your guys on that test beam. Followed by the observer is a warp prism. And here's the spotlight council just finishing up, and I should be getting blink out of it, crumbling that blink out. So now, what you want to do is... You want to use this warp prism to prevent the zerg from droning extremely hard and staying on only a few units, while at the same time keeping whatever army they have back at their side of the base, or their side of the map. So you can very easily take your third base, and you can see here the warp prism flying over and getting my additional warp gates up because my income should be increasing with my uh, increased probe count. Starting the immortal production at the same time. Blink's about to finish. There's a dark shrine on the way. And this warp prism is going to come over. And my goal is to kill as much as I can and be as active as I can with this warp prism. So I just go ahead and land it, start killing a few drones, try not to lose anything. Over here, there were lings attacking these rocks, so I just came over with some ranged units and stopped it. Taking a really early third getting out a good immortal count, constantly spending this chrono boost, um, and being as active as I can with this warp prism, trying not to lose anything at the same time. And now you can see I'm ahead by quite a bit of probes simply because of that warp prism, and I accidentally made a few too many probes. And now, here's where I was talking about that versatile composition uh, is going to start really coming into effect in a moment. Blink Stalkers, Archons, and Immortals are extremely versatile because Immortals take care of roaches, ultralisks, anything high armor. Uh, Archons have amazing splash damage, which protects the Immortals from things like Mutalisks, Lings, and then your Blink Stalkers are uh, the mobile aspect and the like, and they add they add a, a mobile aspect to your core army composition. 
and I'm just getting up a huge amount of Archons instead of and favoring less Blink Stalkers right now because I know my opponent's composition, uh, wherever it is, is primarily Infester Ling, and Infester Ling is going to be doing really bad against a whole lot of Archons with some Immortals. And I can just sort of run my army all over the place. And he can't really engage me. Um, or have all of his army in one ball because I kept attacking over here with uh, units. I have a work person on this side of the map, or at least I will momentarily. And you can see how there's not really anything he can have. He doesn't even have really the resources for Broodlords at this point in the game because he had to spend it defending multiple points of the map at once. And so, since he can't really have Broodlord tech, my army is just good against basically every composition that the Zerg, my Zerg opponent can have right now. And you can see back at my base, it's always good to be having these cannons up in the back, uh, double forge chronoing these upgrades out. You want to chrono these uh, double forge upgrades once your third is up, because that's when you can afford it. Uh, doing these good things like getting more bases when I'm supposed to. And here you can really see the composition shine. As I'm about max on food, get almost everything neural parasited, but it honestly doesn't really matter if he neural parasites a lot of my things, because Archons deal. 39 to bio and only 28 to other things. Immortals deal 55 to armored, but only 22 to other things. So immortals aren't going to be doing any damage to each other until the shields are gone. Archons don't do anything to any of the health of any of my units except solids. Uh, th these units have a lot of HP, so fungal growth isn't going to do a whole lot. It'll take a lot of fungal growth to kill an immortal, a lot of fungal growth to kill an archon. And then these blink stalkers I said are mobile, and you can see I blinked them forward and I'm picking off the infestors that are neural parasiting things and have a lot of energy left. So you can see me focusing down an infester that's doing both of those right now, which is a really high priority target. And his food keeps dwindling lower and lower, and mine just stays really high, and there's not really anything you can do to stop all of these units from pouring and pouring. of his base until he types, taps out the game. So key things I want to look over uh, is really when you get your robotics facility in your Twilight Council and the Dark Shrine and Blink, uh, Warp Prisms, Immortals. Those things all sort of come at the same time all at once and it's important to be able to get them all uh, at the right times and use them all properly. Robotics facility first is going to be safest. Uh, if you know your opponent is delaying lair tech and staying on a whole lot of wings, you're definitely not going to want Robo first, you're going to want Twilight Council first, because that'll give you access to Templar tech, which is a lot better at punishing just a bunch of wings than anything out of the robotics facility. Once the Twilight Council finishes, you want Blink. After you order Blink, you want the Dark Shrine. And then after your observer finishes, you want this warp prism. And I was a little bit slow on getting the warp prism over to the side of the map. Uh, you want to really get this thing into action immediately. I probably could have gotten it over here with stalkers, probably two full minutes earlier if I had been. Um, two or three full minutes earlier if I had been really, uh, adamant about getting these things out. And then back home, um, I don't have a whole lot of units because I'm taking. Uh, third while I'm harassing at the same time and I'm also teching. So that means my army is going to be kind of small. I do have a lot of resources to spend right now, uh, which are going to all get spent in a moment, but the reason I'm able to do this is because I'm not running around the middle of the map with my army right now. So if you were to try to engage me with all the units he has, all these roaches, these lings, um, any other roaches and lings he has on the map, he would have to engage <laughs> into a choky area when my force fields would be able to tear him apart at this point in the game. So I'm just basically using defender's advantage to secure an early third. And then these two archons that I just warped in uh, sort of spike my army value up really high really fast. 
because imagine these two archons were here. This little rabble of units wouldn't be super tough, but add in these two archons and add in a couple more mortals and a few more stalkers in a moment, and my army starts getting really dangerous really quick. And that's a pretty quick overview of uh, the style of play that I wanted to show you. So feel free to ask any questions you have about it in the comments section. And be sure to, su sub to subscribe to my channel if you like my content, because it's a great way to help me get out additional content, and it directly supports me.